Now let's get some input from people who know what it takes to get ready for a debate like this one. Rudy Husney is himself a former conservative leadership candidate. He's prepared former leader Andrew Scheer for debates. He's in Montreal. Michelle Cadario has uh, prepared former Prime Minister Paul Martin and former BC Premier Christy Clark for leadership debates. She's now the CEO of Vanguard Strategy. She's in Toronto, but I think there's something wrong with our connection, so we're going to hope that that squares away as soon as we start. Carl Belanger has worked with many NDP leaders over the years. He's now the president of Traxion. I hope I'm saying that right. Strategy. He's here in studio. Hi, Rudy. Hi, Carl. Good to see you. And Michelle, be hopefully, will be with us in a second. Um, Carl, I want to start with you. And let's just start on the first thing Catherine touched on, and that's the uh, idea that this is going to be in French. How does that change the dynamic, uh, given you know what you know of the candidates so far and their language abilities? Well, the two front runners are, are fluent in French, so that will be interesting because it wasn't quite like that the last time around for the Conservatives. But the question is, how fluid will the exchange be with the four others? I mean, Leslie Lewis, we've seen her in action. Her French is not up to par. Um, I, 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 my doubts about the others. So, so we'll see, because it could be a very choppy debate, and it makes it very unwatchable for Francophone viewers who are trying to follow a conversation in French when French is not actually being used. Yeah, we have that debate, uh, and it'll be translated, carrying tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern here on CBC News Network. Rudy, I'd love to get your thoughts on that as well. Like, does it automatically put, for example, Mr. Polyev and Mr. Charest, uh in, a, in the easiest position. Uh, I was talking to the moderator, I interviewed him already, it'll air a bit later, and he was saying that there is more time than the last debate, for example, for two people to square off, like, you know, m many minutes will they'll be able to debate each other. Uh, does, does the language barrier become a problem, especially in those instances? Yes, I mean, look, it's going to be too dynamic, as you just said. It's going to be Mr. Charest and Mr. Polyev. And I believe Mr. Brown has a level that will allow him at least to make sure that he gets his points across. And there's going to be another dynamic where candidates who are going to read notes and it's going to make part of the debate less interesting. And more importantly, I think it's going to damage also a little bit the image of the Conservative Party when you have people who aspire to be prime minister and leader and cannot, you know, be able to communicate. So I think it's uh, that's going to be the dynamic. But also the expectations are high for Monsieur Charret and Mr. Podiev to make sure that they get their point across. And it will be interesting to see uh, if others will try to make their point or if maybe sometimes some of them will won't jump uh, in certain topics and let the two front runners basically uh, head it off. Michelle, I think you're, I think we're, our connection is good with you now. Your expectation when it comes to candidates who maybe aren't as well uh, versed, aren't as well prepared in speaking French, do you think they kind of sit this one out and say as little as possible or do they try to get in there potentially to their detriment? Well, I think a lot's going to depend on the format, right? Um, has the debate kind of been put together to allow them to refer to notes? Do they know the topics well ahead of time? Do they kind of have an idea of what the um, of what the um, top, the questions are going to be, or is it a lot of back and forth? And is there a lot of time for that one-on-one -on -one kind of debate where you can jump in? If it is the latter, then they're just it's going to be really tough, um, you know. That trying to translate in your head in a second language is hard, um, you know, for the best of people who actually have a facility in the second language. But um, I think that there's a good chance that you're going to see Mr. Sheree and Mr. Polyev, you know, just going back and forth. And, uh, and I'm not sure everybody else can, can, uh, can keep up. Before we talk, Carl, about the potential topics that could come up that are especially relevant, for example, to viewers watching in mm -hmm. Quebec, um, if you kind of take a step back in this race and take stock of it, how significant do you think this debate potentially is? We're a few weeks out, for example, actually just a week and a half out from the membership deadline. We're still a number of months out, though, from the actual leadership election. How does this kind of stack up in importance for you? Well, I mean, it depends what the Conservative members believe in. Uh, do they believe that they need a candidate that speaks French or not? And they should evaluate that tonight. Uh, because, uh, you know, if you don't have a candidate that is able to express himself or herself in French, you're going to be a pretty tough sell in Quebec. And there's a whole bunch of seats in Quebec that are available, could be available to bring the Conservative back to power. So what do you do? You just write them off and you choose a unilingual Anglophone candidate? Or do you look at the candidate and say, okay, well, I like that person's idea, but we really need someone that needs to, that, that needs to be able to communicate in French with, with Quebecers and other Francophones across the country? 
Rudy, um, I, I was speaking to, as I mentioned, the debate moderator, um, Mr. Fortin, who is not a journalist. He's a Conservative Party member. He's well known to the party. He managed, um, or he's the chief of staff to Richard Martel. Uh, he managed the Quebec campaign. I'm sure, I, I'm guessing that, that you know him. I, I sort of put to him, hey, you're not a journalist, so are we to expect softballs? And in particular, are you going to shy away from issues that are of uh, significant controversy in Quebec, like Bill 21 and, and Bill 96, the uh, law that was just passed yesterday. He insisted that no, that will factor into the debate. Uh, how important do you think the candidates' answers on, on those subjects, those, those, those issues which are of particular importance in Quebec, how important are they? They're very important, and you can expect uh, questions on Bill 21 and on Bill 96, either from the moderator or from the candidates themselves that they want to talk about it. You know that uh, Scott Aitchison and Roman Babber already set, uh, you know, set the stage on it today. The problem is that we also have the risk that this debate uh, be seen, especially uh, from the bloc perspective, as Quebec bashing. So there's always a risk that if certain candidates uh, go uh, with their, you know, their, their message that are too strong uh, in Quebec, that, you know, people will just close, uh, close their, their ears and, and eyes and won't follow the rest. So that's, uh, I believe, one dilemma that we're going to have in this debate. Otherwise, for sure, the themes are going to be, uh, they're going to be question on inflation. There's going to be obviously question on the economy. You can also expect questions on foreign affairs. I can confirm to you that there will be no questions on Netflix, no buzzer. What? And no paddles, are, I heard, too. You won't find out no. what favor of Putin they prefer? <laughs> no, and also I confirm that they will be able to talk and uh, mention the name Justin That's Trudeau. Great. Wow. So a little bit of a change from last time. Michelle, uh, final question to, do, to you. I know you've been watching the race closely. Again, as I mentioned to Carl, uh, we're a week away from the membership deadline, essentially a few months away from the actual election. Do you think something like tonight can, can change the trajectory or, or are, is support kind of baked in at this point? Well, I think membership sales are still going, so um, so nothing is firmly baked in. And there's also all the existing conservative members and who, you know, they aren't the new members who everybody's been racing around trying to sign up. So one would think that the that the, the actual base may still have an open mind on this whole thing. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I think that some of the candidates who, who maybe don't speak uh, French so well might be worried about is just how the media kind of come out of it. And, you know, is Patrick Brown, uh, if he if his French doesn't stand up to the to the other front runners, will Ontarians kind of see the, the media and say, hey, you know, is that is that the guy who can actually try and take on Justin Trudeau in the next election campaign? So so I think it matters. Like, I really do. I think there's there must be still some flexibility in the race. And if you really make a blooper or you kind of set something off, um, you know, Things can get away from you. Uh, that's uh, that's that's why races are so exciting. And we've seen French debates, I would just say, in general elections have a big impact on the trajectory of the campaign. So I'll leave it there. Thank you very much, all three of you, for the discussion. Carl Belanger, Rudy Husney, and Michelle Caderios. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.